Okay, right. Well, uh, we're back again. Um, we are. Hello, everyone. Hello, everybody. Um, I think we're up to episode uh, 11, would you? No, sorry, episode 12. Oh. What are we talking about? Yeah, yeah. 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 Doing, a, doing, doing a disservice. We, uh, we're really churning them out. So, um, yeah, up to episode 12, would you believe? So, um, cool. Okay, so for, for this one, we thought we would change up the format uh, a little bit. And... Um, you know, I think it's probably. I was thinking about this before I before I jumped on. It, it it might be worth just a quick sort of reminder as to why you know why we do these uh, videos in the first place. You know what what is the what is the point of it? And I, I think for me, there's a few reasons. You know, first of all, it's obviously if anybody is you know considering thinking about reducing their alcohol intake you know uh, i use the word you know what is it you know re re reassessing redefining your um relationship with alcohol that's one thing or if you're you know really considering uh, quitting alcohol then you know obviously that's another you know big reason why we do these things but i think the other reason um i think where it also can be a huge help is if you have uh, stopped drinking or if you're in the process of of quitting if you're if you're on a break i think this sort of you know listening to two dudes just have a you know regular ch conversation about their experiences of um you know of, of of what it's been like to quit i think it can help with the kind of just motivation or inspiration just to keep keep you on track i know certainly when when i quit drinking i found it really useful to just dial into youtube um videos podcasts and what have you and just and just hear to people talking about their experiences it, it sort of kept me going so it's i think it's just worth reminding maybe reminding us and just reminding everybody really um the reason why we 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 do these and it's 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 for that it's just to help anybody who is on this journey um at whatever point in that journey they're, they're at so um and with that, um, please, please do comment on the videos. That really helps us. Um, definitely subscribe, you know, like. The more engagement yeah. we get, you know, the better it is, the, the better it works. And, and, any, know, and any questions, if there's any topics you want us to cover, you know, we're always very flexible in what we talk about. As Mark said, this is really a, a journey for us as well. And we are here to, to help those people who are in or were in the same situation as as us uh, mark says he's commented before on the videos his situation was different he saw an opportunity uh through the the business that he owned to to improve and knew that there was one thing sort of holding him back and that was that was the booze and uh for me it really was a uh uh, almost, uh, you know, a, a you need to stop this or, or things are going to end badly type situation. So, uh, you know, two different reasons, but it doesn't matter what your reason is. It's, you know, as you, as you say, Mark, it's, it's us having a chat, you know, wherever it might be, we, we, we enjoy doing these and, and we, we want you to, to, to enjoy listening to them. So, you know, subscribe, like, comment, ask us questions, whatever we are, you know, we're super happy with that. Yeah, no, <clears throat> second that absolutely. Yeah, in fact, love love getting the the questions and and you know, look, the feedback that we do get suggests that it is really useful, really helpful for those who do watch these videos. So I think on that basis, the more people we can reach with this uh, with these videos, uh, the more people we can help and uh, get on board, yep. join the uh, join the gang. So right, so for this session, uh, like I said, we're going to do a bit of a uh, bit of a switch up, bit of a change of uh, change band. So Matt and I haven't um, compared notes on on this one, so it could be uh, could be quite interesting. Be a disaster, uh, but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, could be the kiss of death, but fortunately, I have um, Premiere Pro editing, so we can uh, we can take uh, take a load of stuff out if it doesn't quite work. But what we decided to do is we wanted to pick the top three things, uh, the top three benefits that we had experienced as a result of quitting alcohol. And um, look, there are so many benefits. So this was actually uh, I don't know what it was like for you, Matt, but this, this I found it really hard, much harder than I thought. And we'll we'll get into yeah, that. And I agree. What we thought we, yeah, what we thought we would do just to sort of um, really as an interesting exercise for, for these is 
We'll pick three. Um, I'll ask Matt what his first one is. Um, he'll give us a quick overview of that. And then if I had the same one, then that in itself, I think, is somewhat interesting. And I can just maybe give my perspective on that. But if I didn't, if I haven't got that one on my list, then I'll just go to the first one uh, on, on my list and explain that. And we'll just continue until we've got all three out. And uh, uh, like I said, I think it's going to be a really interesting conversation because um, I love talking about the benefits of uh, and the upsides, and I'm always interested in um, you know the, the varying experiences that people have. So, with that, Matt, I will start with you. And uh, right, top three. Give us your first, your first one, the one that's the top of your list, or uh, the one you want to start with. Okay, right. So before I reveal it, I'm going to say that I totally agree with you. It was quite a tough exercise, this, because there are so many benefits. And uh, I was actually uh, up early this morning. It's it's Saturday and um, I had a quiet time. No one else was up and I love that time in the morning. And I was thinking that that's a benefit in itself. Okay, so I'm going to give you my my first one. And my my first benefit that I want to talk about is weight loss. So why weight loss? Well, I think it's the physical change that happened to me that everybody noticed. And, you know, I went from uh, 93 kilos. I haven't looked what that is in, in stone or pounds, but I'm sure you can find the conversion. I live in France. We talk kilos, but uh, you can you can find that out. So I went from from 90, 93 uh, kilos and I now weigh, weigh 73. I mean, that's a huge amount. Go go and pick up 20 kilos of sugar and you'll you'll see or go to the gym and pick up a 20 kilo weight and you'll you'll realize just just how much that is. But the thing is, is it was easy to do. It just, uh, you know, the weight started falling off me when I when I stopped drinking. And that's the one thing as well that kind of like really spurred me on because you you look at yourself and you know, let's let's be honest, right? All all human beings uh, have uh, uh, kind of you know an image or or maybe what they would like to look like, and they know you know deep down if you've got a bit too much weight or if maybe you know you're you know you're not eating healthy, etc. But but you know, I was um, I was what 40, 42, 41 at the time, and you know I was I was getting getting overweight, and I was overweight. And, um, and so when, when I stopped drinking, um, you know, the, 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 the weight just started falling off me and because it did, I started pushing myself to, to make it more so. So, you know, exercise picked up. I started thinking about what I was eating and then, you know, I, I started looking healthier. My skin was better. I looked younger there. I said, you know, I felt healthier. And, and this was even proved when I went for blood tests and, and things like that. You know, I'd had some blood tests shortly before I gave up drinking. And, you know, they were sort of borderline, you know, a few things not 100 percent right. And when I went back uh, six months later, having had, you know, six months off the booze, it was um, a different story. And you know what? On the weight loss thing, you know, let's let's be realistic you know we're human beings and one of the things that you know i think all human beings like and it's just part of life is you know our compliments and when the weight started going you know i i got those compliments and and as a human being it's it's nice to be flattered at times you know when you when someone turns around and says oh my god have you you've lost you've lost weight god you look really good you know you look right you look much better what have you been doing and you know, it's it's a nice thing. Uh, and, and so I, you know, for me, that's that was my that was my number one. You know, there's two others. And I, I wouldn't say this is necessarily the, the top one. But when I was thinking about it this morning, I was like, yeah, I, I want to talk about weight loss. I think it, it for me, it was a, for me, it was a big one. So, you know, it's certainly one of the great rewards and one of the, the physical changes that lots of people see when they when they give up drinking. So. Over to you. I'm intrigued to hear. What okay, you're right. Do you know what? I nearly, nearly had uh, weight loss, and I. <laughs> and do you know? And do you know what? It was. It, it was. Really, right. Yeah, it was so fascinating. And then I nearly completely cheated, and I was. I almost put down health improvement. But then when I started thinking about it, I thought, well, 
you can't put that because that covers so many yeah, I, benefits. Same dilemma. Same dilemma. You like health, you know, that's better skin, you know, better yeah. mental health, better physical health. You look better, you lose weight. Yeah. And um, so I didn't put weight loss down, although I agree with you, it's such a huge upside. It's such a huge benefit. And it's a real hack, it, you know, in terms of, you know, losing weight when you, you we've touched on this and you put this in your book and we've had this in previous podcasts. Yeah. Um, the amount of calories that exist in, in alcohol is, 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 is awful. And um, the calories in a bottle of wine and it's, it's empty calories. So you know they yeah and there's a double whammy with it as well because um biologically when your body processes the calories uh that you consume um one of the reasons why they call alcohol empty calories is because not only is there no nutritional value in alcohol yeah. it's just calorific intake the other the other sort of double gotcha is that your body processes those calories first so if you go and eat a meal and you drink a load of booze the calories that you have consumed from food will will tr translate to weight gain much much quicker because yeah. of the alcohol because you because you get stored as fat because it's consuming the alcohol burning exactly. the alcohol yeah. first so my uh, since i don't have that one on my list now very close so then the first one i put which again, is a good thing in a way uh, i mean because we did this blind as to anyone is generally is we didn't know yeah we, we did and um so i without i won't get too sort of esoteric on this one but and i couldn't think how i would categorize this one so the, the 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 first benefit that i really have enjoyed and, and noticed is that by quitting alcohol for me it has removed so many barriers for me and it took me you know what it took me a while to realize that i mean i kind of was aware of it but it's only been in the last few years that i've suddenly thought shit do you know what like there's nothing getting in my way anymore. Like I can, I can arrange to do anything and I know I'm going to be able to show up. I yeah. can commit to a project that I'm interested in. And aside from maybe, you know, if you get sick or you're ill or you're away or whatever, I can do it. I can go there. And we, we touched on one of these uh, subjects in, in a previous podcast, but the hours that you get back either from the, the hours that you get back because you're not drinking. So, you know, for me, I would normally drink midweek. I'd normally drink on a Wednesday. I'd open a bottle of wine in the evening. I would drink on a Friday, Saturday, and quite often on a, on a Sunday. Um, and actually the truth be told sometimes on a, on a Thursday, if it was, you know, if mm. I sort of had a, I'd, I'd broken the seal on the Wednesday. And, and when I added up all of those hours, plus the hours that you then wake, when you wake up the next day feeling subpar you know tired and look let's face it we've all been in situations either their meetings at work or their social situations or their commitments that you have with your family or your children where you're feeling hung over you're feeling under par you might be feeling a little bit hung over or you might be feeling terribly hung over and the way that i used to deal with those situations is i would just kind of chew through them and what that does is it sort of i think that you develop this sort of latent inner kind of acceptance that becomes part of your character and disposition that says, do you know what? In life, there are going to be times where I just can't really show up properly. There are going to be periods where I'm just not going to be at my best. And I think that casts a shadow over the way that you approach your life so it's not just those times when you're feeling bad that are impacted i think it's all the rest of it that you don't commit to things that you don't lean into things that you don't put your foot forward that you don't put your head above the parapet because actually when you're when you're drinking and if if anybody wants to go back to the have i got a drink problem you know the tier, and i'm talking about the tier two drinkers all tier two drinkers and that's most people in the world will experience this so for me it you know it, it, the fact that I've got the energy and the time and there's just, I've just removed all of those barriers that used to exist that have allowed me to do so many more things with my life. And it's just massive. And I still, even now it's a bit, it's a bit like if you've ever walked on an escalator that has stopped moving and you sort of put your foot on it and your brain tells you that it is moving, even though it is, isn't. I think for a long time I walked around thinking, oh, I still can't really lean into things. I still can't really commit to things because, you know, you know me. I'm, And then suddenly you go, actually, fucking hell, do you know what? I can. I'm, I am okay. Like if, if somebody wants to have a board meeting at 9 a.m. on a Monday, fine by me. I'll be fine. Yeah. I'll be there. So that's a big one for me. 
I think it's huge. It's uh, it's it's such a key one. It's you know, it's, it's the story of my previous life. Really, is uh, you know, so many times I felt uh, you know, probably probably anxiety really because um, you know, I something su su surprise would come up at work or, or something difficult or or someone would plan something for for the Monday morning. And I, I wouldn't be ready for it and I wouldn't have planned for it. And I, and I would be, but, you know, my anxiety would, would, would kick in and, and I would be thinking, oh my God, and I'd be like panicking. And, um, you know, now it, it's, the, it's exactly the same. It's just like whatever happens, happens. It, it, it's absolutely fine. I don't care if I, if I, you know, meet someone important at work who wants to talk to me there and then about an important topic, fine you know, we'll, we'll have a chat about it. It's not a problem. Whereas before, if I was, you know, on the back of a hangover after a, a Wednesday night, I would have been, you know, even to the point of thinking, oh, I'm really sorry, I can't, I can't talk now. I've got a meeting and you know, making things up, you know? So yeah, just, um, I, I, I love that one. And it's, it's, it's so true. Okay. So I guess it's number two. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm giggling. Yeah, yes, I know. So my, my number two is, um, is, is, is restoration of pride. So, um, you know, my, my, my self pride was, was on, on the floor. I think, you know, now I look back at it, you know, I, I, I was, I was, I was going nowhere really. I had a dead end career path. I had no belief in myself. I was, I was just floating through life day to day. You know, I, I believed that that was what adult life was, that you you sort of, you know, get through work, you know, just having a job is enough and you get to the weekend, then it's party time or even in the week, you know, you drink in the evening, whatever it is. And, um, you know, but the reality was is inside, I, I felt completely inadequate. You know, I felt, I felt, you know, that I, I you know, I hadn't succeeded. I hadn't done anything, you know, I had nothing really to show for it. I mean, yeah, I had, you know, a house, the family and still all those great things, but, but it was, you know, just that. And, and, and inside, I, I just had no self-worth. And, and more than that, I, I just, you know, believed that, that nobody really was proud of me. I'd hear of other people achieving things, doing things. It didn't have to be anything financial or anything, but it could just be, oh, you know, did you hear, uh, you know, so-and-so uh, joined this 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 group, uh, you know, could be jujitsu, could be whatever, and they're really enjoying it. And, you know, they, they, they won a medal or whatever. And you just, you know, no, nothing, you know, it was just float through life. Uh, and, and that was it. And, um, you know, I don't really think anybody was particularly proud of me. I don't think anybody had anything, you know, uh, to be proud about in terms of me. And so when you stop drinking, you know, there's this pride in yourself comes flowing back. You, you sit there and I mentioned it in my book and you feel like a bloody superhero because you are doing something that 80% of the world cannot stop doing. And, and you can. And it's it's unbelievable. And it just leads. It's like a domino effect. You know, you feel better in yourself. You feel more confident. You feel more pride. And then you start to do things. I mean, you know, these aren't groundbreaking things, but to me, they're important. You know, I've, I've written a book. I've launched a website. We're working with my brother on this channel. It just brings me huge pride. I have future plans. I think think about the future now and that's something I never did before I've started you know saving and investing money and that's something just wasn't even on the table and and I have a plan I never had a plan and it's all through that restoration of pride that feeling that yeah I am proud of myself I have the right to be proud about myself and and other people have told me so and that that means a huge amount so yeah number two is is pride okay right well i think i have the same one uh, <laughs> i've actually um, i think i've labeled it slightly differently but it's basically yeah. uh the same the same point and it is brilliant well, i still yeah. want to hear it so okay uh, so i yeah. so i put uh which i'm going to say is the same as this, i put the identity uh that it has given me and what i mean by that is that 
every time I say, when I say to somebody, I don't drink, it reminds me that I made this amazing decision for, a, for lots of great, great reasons. And it, and kind of what you were saying about doing something that 80% of the population can't do. It reminds me that I'm living a life of, and this is going to sound a bit wanky, so just go with it, but I'm living a life of purpose and I'm living a life uh, to be connected and uh, aware and, and, you know, dialed in, I suppose. And I get real pride from that. So that's why I'm saying it's the same. It really makes me feel there's a real sense of pride and fulfillment in the identity of being somebody who, who doesn't drink, you know? Um, yeah. Lots of my mates take the piss and uh, you know, they uh, you know, all the rest of it, but you know what? I think I've said this before, you know, I, I, you know, Donald Trump, whatever you think about him, I know he's a character that polarizes and I don't even want to go there with, you know, any comment or thoughts or observations on that. But, you know, when I, I lived in the US when he was first um, running for president and the media would constantly say, but actually, you know, he they would use the fact that he abstains from alcohol as, as, a, as an indication of somebody, look, you know, you might think he's a bit of a wanky, you might not like him, you might think he's a bit of a dick, but he has got discipline and he has got, there are certain things about this man that you cannot, you know, um, discard. And so, it, so I, I, I don't know if that's a great example or not, but it, but it sort of makes the point. And, you know, there are a few sidebar things which actually kind of make me smile. And I wanted to sort of list them out because, um, do you know, what, do you know what is great about this identity and this sense of pride is, um, driving at night. Like if we go out for dinner yeah. or whatever, I, 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 I don't have to think about it. I don't, there's a, there's a part of me that sort of mischievous kind of um childish part of me that w almost wants to be breathalyzed you know i want <laughs> i want whereas whereas previously you know we've all done it we've all been in the car we've had a glass of wine we've had two glasses of wine and you see the blue lights or you drive past a police car and your heart goes and you're like or you're trying to plan an evening out and you're like well who's going to drive how are we going to get there oh i'll tell you what, i'll drive i'll just leave the car all that goes out the window don't even have to worry about that um like I said, saying that I don't drink in a restaurant when somebody comes and says, you know, would you like a glass of wine or what have you? And uh, yeah, the last put that I put in was that it uh, that it gives me gives me a great sense of pride. So I like the identity, and I think you know I can translate that into kind of what you said, which is pride. So so yeah, we're on the same page there, but slightly different, but probably the same. Brilliant, brilliant. That's um, I did think we would have one or two that would be, you know, would be would be the same. I I, I was was convinced, but uh, yeah, it's nice the way like you've phrased it slightly differently, but completely completely interlinked and and the same the same topic. Uh, so number three, um, and again, oh, it was it was hard to think because there are so many, and I wanted to, um, you know, write down others. And but no, we we said it would be three, and we've stuck to three. So my number three is opportunity, and I think opportunity is something that we feel, you know, when you're when you're drinker or you know if you if your life is based around you know uh I, I go to work in the week and i drink in the evening and i drink on the weekends or whatever and that is it you you look at opportunity as something that happens to other people you know oh they're they're so they're so lucky or he was you know he he you know he got that got that break or he got that opportunity or you know look how what he's done it must have you know it must have been luck or something that is bullshit, right? Opportunity knocks and you have to do the knocking. And when you start doing the knocking, the opportunities come. And, you know, my my current job is a great example. I am still in the same company as I was in when I was was uh, drinking or coming to the end of my drinking career, if that's the right way to put it. Um and but it was when I stopped that everything everything changed. And, and about uh, a year and a half after I after I stopped, I was I was doing, you know, infinitely better, <laughs> smashing it. And and I wanted to change role. I was like, I've been doing this role for I think it was uh, nearly four years. And so I went out and found that new role. So. You know, uh, and then there was a long process. Don't get me wrong; it wasn't it wasn't just me. I, I there were other internal people who went for the role, but 
if I hadn't gone and asked for that opportunity, if I hadn't sought out that opportunity, that opportunity wouldn't have happened. And it, and that has opened doors for me again. And I think as well is, you know, it's it's more than just work or financial thing. It's It's starting to think about, you know, your life. Like when I was a kid, I remember I, I could walk down the street when I was maybe, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old. I could name every single car I walked past and I could tell you the brand it was and I could probably tell you the engine size. I loved cars and I, and I still love cars. And, you know, I kind of, you know, it's a passion that, that maybe slipped me by because I you went into the workplace and it was, you know, follow the money and not your passion and now i see those opportunities differently and i'm not saying that necessarily cars will become a a source of work stream or anything like that but but i have a passion for sobriety and so i've sought out these these opportunities so you know writing a book you know working on this channel and and all those sort of things that just wouldn't have been possible before and you know you've you get to you get the opportunity not just to take those opportunities but to absolutely seize them you know to be the best you can be and um yeah there is opportunity all around and it opens up to you when you when you stop drinking it really does and that's been a big thing for me so uh yeah opportunity is is my number three yeah, you know, and I think um, we. This has been really fascinating, actually, because uh, I, it's intriguing to uh, first of all discover what your three were. But I think there are crossovers. You know, I think opportunity is very similar to my point about removing barriers, which is that you're yeah. you're in a you're you're not afraid to step forward. You're not afraid to give something a go, and it doesn't fix every problem on in the way. You know, by by quitting drinking, it doesn't. But what it does do is it sets you up to be able to tackle things in a way which. Oh, I mean, it's just night and day better. So I, I agree. So, OK, so my third and final one, and I bet you had this on your on your consideration list is uh, is sleep. I know we've talked about this and, uh, you know, and again, this was so difficult because and I think what's I think it's great that it was so difficult because it's so difficult because there are so many benefits you could list. Yeah. The list is endless. And, you know, you could summarize the whole list by saying, my health is better, my mental health is better, my physical health is better, my life is better, I'm happier, I'm less anxious, I'm less sad. The other thing as well, actually, funny enough, one of the things in terms of removing barriers I wanted to put is that sort of my mood has stabilised. You know, I alcohol kind of spikes your emotions i think it spikes your emotions and since i've quit drinking i'm much more calm i'm much more kind of on a level still get annoyed about things still find things yeah. uh, difficult frustrating and equally still find things hilarious and funny but the sort of general mo is is much straighter but but the third benefit is sleep and that you know folds into all of that as well and i think the reason i put sleep is because it blew me away i i still can't quite believe how I think there's two things. I can't believe how well I sleep. I can't believe how badly I slept when I drank. You know, when you drink alcohol, you think, oh, I'll have a few glasses of wine. That will knock me out. And of course, the chemistry of this is such that it, what it does do is it shuts you down and then your body has to restart. And so you get a flood of adrenaline and actually all yep. of the restorative, uh, replenishing uh, benefits of sleep are totally lost when you put alcohol in your system. And it's becoming a more and more... Uh, there's, there's more and more known about the science and the research behind sleep, which um, it really goes to highlight just how important sleep is, not just in terms of, you know, uh, how long you sleep, but the quality of your sleep. And there's loads of research now about, you know, circadian rhythms and the, the process of sleep and the REM process. And, and basically the reason that human beings sleep is because they need uh, a time, the body needs a period of recycling. It needs the time to uh, wash out the toxins. It needs to um, re replenish cells. It does a whole bunch of things. And when you drink alcohol, you basically get rid of all that, which means you're tired. It means poor mental health. It means low levels of energy. It means poor physical health. And I was laughing actually, funny enough, you know, just when I was thinking about this list, I remember 
when I used to drink and I would drink at the weekends and very often at the weekends, for, I don't know why, but I would find myself in a department store with my wife. She'd be looking to buy something. And I would remember I would just think, oh, I'll be fine. I'll just find a chair. I'll just slump in that chair and I'll be fine. And it was just that exhausted. I couldn't wait to sit down when I used to drink. Whenever there was a seat, whether it was in a, a museum or a, a, a store or wherever it was, I would go and sit down. And ironically, now I am the opposite. You know, I've got more energy and it's and, and by sleeping well, it means you start every day in a better frame of mind um, and, you know, better able to deal with the opportunities that you just talked about in work, better able to deal with with life. And it just fucking makes the world of difference. So uh, third and final one, sleep. There you go. Yeah, I, I did. I did think about that one in great detail because it is such a such a key one. And, uh, you know, funny little uh, just interesting little story. I went to the um, I think it's cardiologist. You know, what? I, I for people watching, I, I live in France. I spend my my most of my time speaking French. My wife is French. And uh, so I do forget. So I was going to go heart doctor. Is that the word? Um, so anyway, and she asked me, do I sleep well? And I said, yeah, I sleep really well. And um, uh, and I said, why did you ask that question? And she said, well, because um, people who, who don't sleep um, tend to have a different cardiac rhythm. And, uh, you know, sometimes we pick it up and uh, it can be a reason behind it. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, only slight, you know, it just people who really struggle to sleep uh for for various reasons so anyway off i off i went onto the onto the bed lay down you know with the the the, the sucker things on and um she did she did one one test and then she was like right up you get i was like okay uh so we're done she went yep yeah. she went i normally do a second test she bed, but i'm i don't need to she was like like everything is 100 percent fine uh and and actually, you know, so how interesting was that she mentioned mentioned sleep, and um, uh, and then it goes back to my one about pride, which is like, you know, you walk out the doctor's feeling good, you know, you're like, great, you know, I'm 48 years of age, and and you know, for now, I'm in, I'm in good health. So um, yeah. yeah, an interesting that's another. One. That's another. When I talked about the identity and the, um, the the pride that it gives you, that's another one. When you go to the doctors and you have to fill out a form, and they ask you how much you drink, and you're able to say nothing. I always love that bit because yeah, yeah. previously I certainly I would say I used to lie about it, but I'm not sure the answer I gave <laughs> was necessarily uh, aligned to the truth. So brilliant. Well, look, I think we need to probably bring it to a close. But that was really, yeah. was really fascinating. That was um, a lot of fun. Yeah. And I think there's probably content in there maybe to sort of go a little bit deeper on 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 some of these but um but look as we said before we we you know I hope this is useful um you know yeah and maybe give us your top three in the comments you know if you want to share those with us that'll be that'll be really interesting it really really would yeah brilliant all right we'll call it a wrap thanks ever so much and uh until the next time so cheers matt thanks very much bye mark have a good day everyone